All right, hopefully you can see this. Like I said, we're going to be focusing on ICs 1 and 2, as well as these four diodes, and then probably also, uh, let's see here, D12, which is feedback for the first device in IC1. Then also, we might even look at um, the feedback for the second device, and oh, no, sorry, the first device in IC2. First and foremost, though, uh, the things, the tools that you need for this modification are, of course, the soldering iron. Cutters, side cutter, as high precision as you can afford. And actually, these were like five bucks on Marlon P. Jones or somewhere. Tweezers help a lot. And then to clean up the solder, you're going to need some sort of a solder wick. Um, maybe a portable vice, portable vice, but in this case, I think I'm going to try just without one. So the first step is um, on this kind of a board, and really any board, but on this board especially, um, this PC board is, so the non-conducting part of the board, or the, you know, the main part of the board essentially is fiberglass. Um, and uh, there's only copper clad on one side. So most modern boards have copper clad on both sides, and most holes are plated through, meaning that the copper on one side is joined to the copper on the other side, um, plated through the hole. I mean, that incre increases the strength of that solder joint and of that trace immensely, but in this case, like I said, there's only one layer of copper, so we have to be really careful that when we remove any of these components and then clean up the solder joints, that we don't apply too much heat to break down the adhesive between the copper clad and the FR4 or the fiberglass. Um, because what that'll do is it'll lift the copper traces and then it'll make it more difficult to essentially uh, repair or um, make into a, a working board. So that's the first thing to think about. Um, so as far as pulling ICs off, uh, there's different methods you can use. Um, my favorite is to just clip all the leads off and then pull each one out separately. So that's what I'll do now. So I'm going to focus on IC1 first. Another thing, there's uh, silk screening on this board, so I don't have to worry about making sure that I mark the pin 1 of the IC, or the orientation of the device. It's already marked on the board. If you encounter boards that don't have that, you're going to want to mark it some way, so that when you go back, you don't... It um, makes it easier to, to orient the component, the new component. So IC1, and what I want to do in this case is just clip, cut each pin. What I try to do is cut pins long enough so I have something to connect to with the tweezer. So here you can see one half is disconnected. And really, I'm completely destroying this IC. Don't need it again. Throw that away. So as IC one, and then do the same thing with IC two. Just be careful of the other components that you're not modifying. Cheat. All right. 
kind of ugly, but we'll fix it. So what I want to do then is take the tweezers, solder iron, and like I said, this, in this case, the a vise might help you, but basically all you do is grab onto one of the leads with your tweezers on one side, and then melt the other side and pull the leads out. The pins out. The orphan pins. And if you got everything set right, it should be pretty quick. Oops. You can also just kind of push them through with the soldering iron. If you can't get, grab a hold of them with the tweezers. And the secret here is to not apply too much heat to the, to the trace. Because like I said, if you overheat that, it's likely to, to cause the adhesive to break down. And then we'll go to the, the other IC area, which is here. This is actually easier to do by yourself without a camera with the vise. But for your sake, I'll do it this way. Come on. It's actually almost easier just to push the pins out a little bit with the soldering iron and then grab them with the tweezer after. Okay, one side is done, go to the other side. Come on, there you go. So, ICs are done. Get rid of the legs. And actually, you want to be a little more careful than I'm being here. You don't want these to get into the rest of the circuit anywhere and short things out. So, good housekeeping. Can save you problems in the future. Alright, so I see is one and two are gone. In this case, they even marked what type it's supposed to be. Don't care about that at the moment. Alright, and then the other components I want to remove are um, these diodes. And as you can see, they're also silk screened as far as the uh, orientation. So diodes are marked, uh, the cathode is marked with the band. Is that right? I think so. So negative is band, positive is no band. So what I'll do is um, just pull those out as I heat them. So pull them out with a tweezer as I heat the other sides. So you just basically just grab onto one end, make sure you're on the right solder pad, and pull it out. So that's what that looks like there. You can see it. Uh, where is it? Right there. So there's one end, and then the other, whoops. What I'm going to do is I'll save these uh, to demonstrate the forward bias voltage later. So many things to share. Same thing, you can kind of just push a little bit with the soldering iron. Yeah. Try to get out with the tweezer. There it is. 
Okay, three. And four. All right. So I'll save these for later. And these are like not even like five cents a piece or something, but uh, same for later to, for demonstration purpose. Okay, and then what we want to do is clean up the solder joints. So I'm going to start with the diodes. And we go this way so you can see it better. Alright, so the secret of the solder wick here is that it's it's braided copper that's completely covered in solder flux, so it makes it easier to wick solder. Um, but cleanliness, cleanliness is your friend, so you want to make sure that you have uh, fresh solder on the tip of your soldering iron, soldering iron that's clean, and then essentially what you want to do is as quickly as possible so you don't again deteriorate the adhesive um, of the traces. Place the solder wick against the trace and allow it to wick up into the, to the solder wick. As you can see now that hole is essentially clear and then you do that for the rest of the holes. Um, you could also use a solder sucker. Many people are fond of solder suckers. Um, I find that this method makes the holes a little cleaner, but uh, solder sucker works um, as well. You see all that wicks up there, why it's called solder wick. So there we go, clean holes. As quick as possible, move on to The next holes, same thing. So the secret of soldering is always solder the joint, um, or heat the joint. You don't heat the solder that you're using, you heat the joint. So in this case, when you're using the wick, you want to heat the wick because the wick is what's pulling the solder up away from the joint for you. And once you get so much uh, of the wick soaked to solder, cut it off, get it all the way. It's easier to use if you get rid of some of it. And keep going. So yeah, pretty good. Does enough be perfect? We're just gonna solder. A new IC, actually in this case a socket, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Instead of soldering the ICs directly in, the replacement ICs, what we're going to do is solder a socket. And that's just good practice, really, to replace ICs with a socket so that they can be changed out easily in the future, so you don't have to resolder again. And it does pay to, to uh, <laughs> it pays to pay more for the higher quality sockets compared to the cheaper ones uh, because they tend to last longer and they also grab the the leads better. So yeah, there you go. So there's clean holes, IC1, IC2, and then also the the four clipping diodes. So now let's solder those sockets in there. Okay, so I've got these sockets, they're called, and I think I got this from Ronald P. Jones. Talk about that place uh, all the time. But essentially, they're pins that are in a piece of plastic so that um, so they're spring-loaded sockets that you can stick ICs in there and you can pull them out again without soldering. 
Uh, you can get them in anywhere from um, six pins up to like 40, maybe more. 40, 60, 62, something like that. In this case, we need eight for each side. And as you can see, oops, as you can see, there is a notch here that helps uh, locate pin one. Right, so we got a bag of 20 of them here. We'll grab two of them. Okay, so let's start with IC1. So what you want to do is, if you look at the silk screen there, the notch on the one end, you match up the notch on the same end with the socket, right? So you can see that. All right, and I'll show you a technique that I developed a long time ago. There's a few things you can do. You could maybe place a piece of tape over this um, or set it on something so that it you know holds it in there I'll show you what I do so what I do is I take my pinky my left hand make sure I got my solder there I hold the socket in with my pinky kind of in the middle make sure that it's tight and then what I do is see this uh, quickly tack the corners with solder so there's one and I can already feel the heat in my pinky there's two but the idea is to do it quickly enough so that you don't burn your finger right so make sure that the sockets in there properly I got the notch lined up with the notch and the silk screen All right and then the same thing for I see two Notches matched up. Pinky holding. Get the solder. All right. So feel free to experiment and come up with a better way. Use it. This is my method. Tack corner. Tack the corner. All right. Okay. So now all that suck is not going to fall out solder the rest and what I want to do here is kind of combine this into a soldering tutorial so hopefully hopefully that's focused well so for soldering you want to buy as high quality soldering iron as you can afford um, I know entry level, um, $15, you can get decent soldering iron. I'll put some links to what I've used in the past and what I'm using now in the description. You also want to use high quality solder. I typically use tin lead, um, which is unacceptable for if you're producing product for global cons consumption. But for hobbyists and for my use, I still use tin lead. Otherwise, you're going to have to use uh, lead free. Um, but you want as high quality solder again as you can afford. And so the method of soldering is you want as clean a tip as possible. And you tin it with fresh solder. And then there's usually a sponge incorporated in your soldering iron. You want to make sure that there's water on that sponge, but it's not soaking wet, but it's wet enough to to cool the tip and remove the excess solder. All right, so we've got a nice clean tip here. And then the idea is to, like I mentioned earlier, you apply heat to the joint and then apply solder to the opposite side of the joint and you let the the solder and the flux flow. Um, so you can't see it here, but but most electronic solder is uh, filled. The center is filled with flux, which um, re removes oxides, um, cleans the metal surfaces, and um, 
allows a, a better solder joint, cleaner solder joint, better solder joint. Um, you can use your pinky to steady yourself or just go for it. Um, but essentially what you do is apply heat to both the, the pin that you're soldering and the trace at the same time. Hopefully you can see this. And then you apply a little bit of solder and then bang. So you don't want too little, you don't want too much. What you want is a nice smooth surface that's covering the entire pad and fillets onto the pin. Uh, you don't want a big glob there that's sticking out. You don't want to bridge anything. Um, really uh, practice and experience. You know, there's no substitute for practice and experience. So um, if you would like to solder, I suggest buying uh, some inex inexpensive electronic kits that are designed to help you practice soldering. Um, and go ahead and practice. You know, practice on things that aren't critical first, and then once you believe that you have a technique that's that you're happy with, then go ahead and start building some projects that you really care about. All right. So there we've got all solder joints on IC1, I think that was. Move on to IC2. Same thing. Now I attack these corners, so I want to start with opposite corner so I don't so the socket doesn't fall off. You know you want to apply enough heat to thoroughly melt the solder, but you don't want to cook the crap out of it. And again, uh, if you overheat, what can happen is those these copper traces can lift off the board, which would be a bad thing. Then you got a whole bunch of repair to do, and it's not fun. I've done it. It sucks. All right, so we've got the sockets soldered on. Solder joints look pretty good. We can clean those up later with a little bit of IPA, isopropanol, um, or flux off. There's a chemical that's called flux off that you spray in there that cleans off the residue, but tell you the truth, denaged alcohol or uh, isopropanol work just as well. So we'll do that when I'm done soldering here. Next step then is um, to solder on the uh, the new diodes and actually let's unbox those first then I'll also show you the difference between the, di the diodes that were there versus the diodes that we're going to install. Okay, I'm going to hide my address for now but uh, I like to order a lot of stuff from Marlon P. Jones and Associates. They have a lot of surplus electronics as well as some new stuff, but uh, um, I'll put a link in the, the description. Um, I would like to contact them eventually and maybe become a um, affiliate. That's a damn term. Getting too late. I well, usually send first the invoice and flyers and other stuff. Packing. So uh, this time I've got a potentiometer, a 10K, I forget what it is, like a 20 turn precision pot, potentiometer. But then the uh, real reason I opened this uh, up is because uh, I ordered a whole bunch of of germanium diodes and so th these are what we're going to install as clipping diodes into the amp today. So I've got a whole bunch for this project and should last a while in the future. Get rid of the box. Fantastic. But anyway, MPJA, Marlon P. Jones and Associates. Alright, so what is the difference between these diodes and these diodes that were in there? Oops. <laughs> All right. Reset. So what is the difference between the diodes that were in there, these little tiny things, 
and these slightly bigger things that I bought. Um, quick, quick crash course, and I'll probably do a course on electronics eventually, but for those of you who, who don't know, um, diodes are semiconductor devices that allow current to flow only in one direction. So if you hook them up one way, electricity flows through them. If you hook them up the other way, electricity doesn't flow through them. That's why they exist. That's why th that they're useful. Um, when they're using a the clipping circuit, um, they're set up so that um, they chop off <clears throat> the top of the the tops and the bottoms of the wave, depending on how they're connected, um, to produce what we consider to be an overdrive sound. So they emulate um, way back when you know when when amplifiers were all made with tubes. When tubes were overdriven, meaning that they're um, pushed beyond their capabilities, they would start to distort the signal and what would happen is um, the peaks of that signal, um, as I showed you on the Ofscope earlier, would start to get squished. And we call it overdrive. So what this, these devices do is if you connect them in a circuit a certain way, um, they essentially emulate the, the natural uh, um, distortion that is produced by a tube circuit. Uh, it's not the same, but it sounds pretty close. And what I'm doing here is um, these are comprised of, the semiconductor is comprised of silicon, and the ones that I bought are comprised of germanium. They're both semiconductors. Germanium is actually an older technology. That's the um, type of semiconductor um, compound that uh, actually is germanium an element? Silicon's an element. I think germanium might be too. I have to look at the periodic table. Anyway, what we found out back in the mid 1900s is that certain elements, especially if combined with oxides and combined with other elements, uh, we can create semiconductors. And really, that's the basis of all transistors that you've probably heard of. And um, you know, all of our computing technology today is based on uh, silicon based semiconductors. Anyway, so what I'm going to show you here is I've got my trusty x type meter set up um, in diode mode. And you can see at the top here. What that does is it measures the forward bias of the diode when connected properly. So if the diode is connected backwards, it's going to be well, meaning that it's, it's not forward bias, meaning that it can't flow current. But if it's connected in the right polarity, uh, plus to plus, minus to minus, it will tell us what the voltage drop of that diode is. And what that means is how that translates to the signal that we're trying to clip. It tells us the voltage that it's going to clip the top of that um, signal um, to that voltage. So in this case, the silicon diode is going to clip to, it's hard to read backwards for me, 5.28 5 volts. All right, so it's going to clip that signal. And we've got, in the schematic, we've got two of these in series. Let's try another one here. So this one is at 5.25, so these are pretty regular. Uh, 0.5, sorry, not 5 point, but 0 0.5, I misspoke. Sorry, it's getting late. 0 0.5 volts. So when you connect two of these in series, the voltage drop adds together, so we're expecting about one volt drop when two of these are connected in series. So the original schematic is going to chop off the waveform um, when it comes to these devices at about one volt. What's going to happen when we connect a germanium? Let's find out. So we're going to connect plus to the anode, minus to the cathode. All right. What do we get? Wow, 2 point, zero, uh, point, I did it again, point 0.209 volt. 
so less than half of the silicon. So again, if you connect these two of these in series, which the way that the PC board is set up is to uh, that's configuration, and the goal is to fit four of these into the space that the previously the four semiconductor uh, or the silicon uh, diodes were connected. Yeah, so this one's point two, one zero one one. So if you connect these in series, the entire voltage drop is going to be less than 0.5 volts. So it's going to be less than one half of what the original was. What that's going to do is it means it's going to clip our signal essentially um, more thoroughly. Um, and the characteristic of, of how the, the roll-off occurs or how the um, the voltage clipping occurs with germanium versus silicon is different. It just sounds different. It sounds more gradual, more smooth, uh, more creamy. Um, so I'm really excited, number one, to look at the difference on the oscilloscope, but of course number two, listen to the difference. All right, so let's uh, install these in the board and go from there. Alright, let's get these in here so you can see them. Alright, there's a couple things you can do. So, you know, these you need to go in these holes here. And the, the black band is supposed to match up with the, the wider white band on the silk screen here. And a couple things you can do. One is you can take a needle nose pliers like this. You know, angled one, straight one, whatever. Let's see if I can get this in here so you can see it. And what you do is you estimate where the bend is going to be. All right, so actually I'm going to do it this way. So you can stick the the needle nose in between the glass body and the bend. And we'll see how that goes. And then just bend it. So you want to be careful. You know, you do want to be careful of the glass to metal seal. And you basically do the same thing for the other side. Try to form a staple shape. Right? Be careful. All right, so we'll try that first. And I can already tell it's a little too long, quite a bit too long. So the better thing to do is get one of these resistor bender tools. And looks to me like the spacing is about 0.4 inch. All right, so straighten this out again. Again, be careful of the glass. And you know what? I'm going to use a fresh one just because. Just because I don't like to install ugly stuff. Where did I put it? Can I say about a hundred of them? I'm good for a while. All right, so four. You just place it in between there, and then carefully bend both sides, same direction. Try to make it neat, and then drop the. Make sure the black band is matching up with the silk screen. You see that? Okay, good. <clears throat> so then what I typically do is push down it on the one side, push down on it on the one side, and then bend the leads over. Again, being careful, don't 
break anything, but bend them over and that holds it in place. And then I'll do the same thing for the other three. So again, point four. And after you do this a couple hundred times, it gets to be pretty easy. Oops. I haven't done it for a long time, so that's why I suck right now. So again, bend it over, bend the leads over. Get them in the holes. Make it look neat. So you can brag to your friends, show them what you did. I mean, yeah, usually when I do this, uh, I want to try to make things look as neat as possible, neat and professional. Why well, make it sloppy? You know, you want it to be, when you look at it again, and you probably will eventually. You want to be proud of the work that you did, right? So, that's the way I see it. And also, if you share it, then say, yeah, check it out. I know what I'm doing. Alright, so, verify, verify that the Orientation is correct, so we've got the bands, the black bands matched up with the wide white bands on the silk screen. All right now, time to solder. Flip it around so you can see it. It's harder for me to do it this way, but uh, easier for you to see. So, lucky you. Clean my tip. Oops. And actually, for me, this is a new soldering iron. Um, I like the again link in the description. I like everything about it except the tip. The tip is a little bit too fat, but I can handle it. Again, you heat the component and the trace, and then feed the solder in the other side. It's kind of like a balance. That's the way I see it. So you're, yes, you're feeding a little bit of the solder in there to assist with the heat transfer, but you don't want to, say, drop hot solder onto the joint because then. You end up trapping oxidation in between the wire and the, the trace, and that produces a poor solder joint. So there you go. There it is. Memorize that, that there's a professional solder operation, professional solder joints for your viewing pleasure. And then, um, in this case, in the previous case, uh, there's nothing left to cut off. But in this case, you got all these unruly leads cutting off. So you take your trusty side cutter and simply, carefully, of course, you don't want to pry pry the um, the traces off. So you just let the tool do the work, and you go up against the solder joint and just squeeze. Snip, snip, snip. Cut those off. Same thing with the other side. Snip, snip, snip. Yippee. I'm just making sure there's a little solder ball in there. All right, so soldered on. And almost looks like a professional job now. Imagine that. Yep. Um, so.
next thing is to find some ICs to stick in those sockets because the circuit's not going to work like this.